So you know those tech review videos where you don't really know who the reviewer is, but they happen to be in a very interesting location and they have a cool new piece of gear, so you watch their video? Well, that is Iceland, and this is the new Mavic 2 Pro. Hi everybody, it's Andy from Andy's Travel Blog. Like I said, here in Iceland, I'm on a farm where I stayed in the guest house uh, just north of Seljalandsfoss along the southern coast of Iceland. I've done the entire ring road in seven days, heading back to Reykjavik tonight, heading back to Texas tomorrow. And this video is really about Iceland, but it's about Iceland via the Mavic 2 Pro. So DJI released two new drones like a week and a half ago, and I ordered the Mavic 2 Pro during the announcement. Luckily, it got to my house like two days before I left for Iceland, so I was able to take it on this trip, which is great for everybody, hopefully for you too. Uh, but real quick, before I show you some of the footage and show you some of the images, let's talk about the Mavic 2 series. Uh, they released, DJI released two drones as part of the Mavic 2 series. The Mavic 2 Zoom, which has a 12 megapixel sensor and can zoom optically 28 millimeters to 48 millimeters in like DSLR equivalents. Um, and they released the Mavic 2 Pro, which cannot zoom, but it has a 20 megapixel sensor similar to the Phantom 4 Pro, which I have and I love. So it has a 20 megapixel one inch sensor. So it's a much, much better image quality uh, for stills. And when it comes to video, this can shoot in 10 bit color uh, and they have their DJI's new D-Log M format that you can shoot in to capture all of the dynamic range. I, I don't know how to shoot with that. I don't know how to color grade it. So I just shoot in their normal modes, but maybe someday I'll learn. This is probably a good reason to learn. Now, let me tell you how I've used it and why I wanted the Pro. I, like I said before, I'm not much of a drone videographer. I'm, I'm not much of an actual videographer either. Um, I'm a pretty good photographer and I feel like I'm a good drone photographer and so I wanted image quality. I do use my drone for commercial purposes, uh, helping construction companies keep track of their projects and stuff like that. Um, so I needed good image quality. 12 megapixels wasn't going to cut it. I needed 20. So this drone right here is incredibly portable. It folds down, uh, these propellers fold in and it actually can fit. So the drone, the battery, two extra batteries and the controller in this little bag, which compared to my head, and I have a big head, uh, you can see it's just, it doesn't take up that much space compared to the Phantom 4 Pro, which takes up all the space you have. And then you have to add the batteries and then you have to add the controller. And before you leave on your trip, half of your rollerboard is just your drone. So I love the portability of this. As you can see, it folds right up. Um, and that's not the fold in one. Make sure I don't break this in my YouTube video. That would be embarrassing. Um, okay, so it folds right up into this little comfy, tiny package. Uh, and yeah, it's just wonderful. Um, so let's talk though about Iceland. What have I been doing here? Well, I've been flying a drone around and I've been taking pictures and driving around. I've done most of, like I said, most of the ring road. Um, I started in the Snæfellsnes Peninsula around Kirkjafell, then went up into the West Fjord region, uh, which was wonderful. And then I went across the north over to Akurere and then down to the Vestra Horn and to Vik to the Diamond Beach. And then I'm very close to Seljalandsfoss and heading back to Reykjavik tomorrow. And what I've tried to do is get a good sampling of footage from the drone to share with you. Um, first off, let's look at some pictures. Um, you can see the full versions of these on andystravelblog.com. You can use the link in the description below to get there. The image quality is excellent. I think it's on par with the Phantom 4 Pro, uh, which I love and I use in commercial work again. Uh, so it's very capable, the dynamic range is good. DJI, for whatever reason, is a bit nuclear in the greens, so you really have to work with the greens and the yellows uh, and make sure they're well contained. Uh, but you can shoot in raw and it's really not that big of a deal. Pretty easy to correct. So uh, here's a couple of images uh, from my experience here in Iceland. Okay, you've seen some images. Now when it comes to video, you have a bunch of different options that you can choose from. You can just choose from normal flying, um, and then you have the pitch and yaw controls for the uh, gimbal right there on the controller. And so you can do a shot like this, for example, at Alde Arfos. So 
So that's pretty cool, unless it gives you vertigo, in which case I'm sorry. Um, and But then you can do shots like active track, which active track is simply where you just point at something, you click something on this on your phone screen or your tablet screen, and it will track that individual or track that object. I didn't want to just videotape me running around because you've seen me a lot, so I wanted to, it to track something a little different. It kept up really well with the car, so the drone in its P mode uh, can fly up to 30 miles an hour, so I was able to get a good amount of speed and it kept up with me pretty well. Uh, so kudos to DJI on that. Now something new they added for the Mavic 2 models is hyperlapse mode. For those of you who don't know what a hyperlapse is, a time lapse would be like a static camera looking at a scene, taking images at a, at a certain interval and then combining it all together to make it look like a video. Well, hyperlapse does the same concept but moving. So it's not like moving on a slider from here to here, it's moving like from over there to over there. So they can do the whole thing in camera now, or in drone and deliver a 1080p hyperlapse that they make or you can keep the raw files and do it yourself. So here's an example of a hyperlapse. Okay, it started raining so I had to cancel that one. So here, here's another one. Okay, so you take the image quality, you take the uh, active tracking and, the, and the, the new sort of technology they're building into this thing. Uh, before I moved to my, the debut of my drone film about Iceland, how is it to fly? Yeah, I, I, I flew the original Mavic Pro and I didn't really like it compared to my Phantom 4 Pro. It just didn't feel as powerful, as capable. It felt like the wind was flying it as much as I was sometimes. The Mavic 2 Pro changed all that. It flew so well. It was very capable. Uh, I felt in control of the drone. Even in some pretty windy conditions, I could take it up to altitude and it was excellent. I mean, this is a really, really seriously capable drone. Um, but I want you to be the judge of that yourself. Um, I would like to debut my drone film about Iceland. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed putting it together. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, 
And that's going to wrap up this quick review of these first impressions of the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I spent the money. Uh, I'm glad I got the Fly More combo with a little baggie. Uh, it was very functional. Uh, but yeah, what do you want to know? Leave me some comments. Let me know if you have questions about this. And like I said, the full-size images will be available at andystravelblog.com. And there's a link below. This is Andy from Andy's Travel Blog. We'll see you in the skies. Take care.